So we were uh, you know, uh, solving this problem yesterday. So we are trying to find the efficiency of this joint. Um, so we have come up to the a point where we have calculated what is the bolt value, that is the design bolt strength of you know, each of the bolts that are used. So we are now uh, we are now uh, tasked to find out what is the uh, efficiency of this joint. So when you say efficiency, it is always what is that is required and what we have. The ratio of these two quantities expressed in percentage. That's the efficiency, isn't it? Sometimes we uh, also express it in terms of some fraction. Okay. So once you have determined what is the bolt value, we have to find out uh, what is the actual strength of the uh, no, uh, connection, not just the bolt. Because when you say connection, it has bolts as well as the connecting members. So since we have made some holes there, so it, its strength would have come down. So we had to find out those strengths also. Now, at the end of last class, we have identified that the bolt value is 45.27 kilonewtons, right? Now, this plate, either it can uh, you know, uh, tear off along the line where we have the bolts, so that's the tearing strength of the plate or it can yield at the you know gross section like gross section yielding means even though we don't have bolts uh, any bolt holes it can just tear off at that point now what is the yield of gross section of the plate So we write, write that as uh, T, T, G, yield of gross section of the plate. That is nothing but the total cross section of the plate, okay, which is A, G, F, Y by the factor of safety. Okay. Now, let's look, look, uh, look at the problem and then try to understand what is the net section of the plate. So its total breadth will be sum of all these quantities, isn't it? So how much we have? We have 380s, 240, and then another 80, so 320. That's the total breadth. And then what is the thickness of this one? Remember, there are two plates. One is of 12 mm, other one is of 16 mm. So we shall be always taking the minimum one because that's the one which has least strength. So thickness that we have to take as 12. So 320 into 12. So that will be the, the area of cross section for the yielding. And then obviously we have to take the yield strength, which is 250, not the ultimate tensile strength. Okay. And hence we'll have a 320 into 12 into 250. 250, yeah, right, divided by 1 point. Okay. Um, now let's look back. What is the, uh, uh, do you have any information on the uh, factor of safety for this one? For the material in yielding? 1.15. 1 1.15. Okay, now if you compute what is the value of this one, it will come to something like 872 kilometer. Now, this is the yielding of the gross cross section, okay, where we don't have any bolt holes. Now, let's look at the tearing strength of the plate. Tearing strength of the plate, by which we mean, uh, let's copy that and then see. It is very clear that this line passing through the no this line passing through the bolt holes is likely the the most okay it's it is obviously the most uh, pop, uh, possible uh, line of tearing okay where tearing can happen okay now 
if you assume a section here, so we have to deduct these bolt holes from the gross cross section. That will be the net area, net cross sectional area, right? Now, what is that quantity? A n will be equal to B minus. So, how many uh, bolt holes we have? So, let's say let me say n into D naught T. It's not D. It's D naught because okay, it's multiplication we have. We we have to detect the bolt hole diameters of or n uh, you know n bolt uh, n bolt holes. Right, so we have uh, four bolts, four bolt holes here. So will be, n will be equal to four, and then D naught will be twenty two because twenty is the diameter of a bolt. And then twelve again, we have to like look at the minimum thickness uh, plate, not the sixteen. So this is equal to three twenty minus four into twenty two into 12. Okay. Now, if you compute this value, this will come to something around 2784. Now, obviously, we are try trying to find out what is the tearing capacity of the uh, strength uh, plate, tearing strength of the plate. So, that is TDN is equal to AN. Okay. Let's look at the formula that we have. There is a factor of 0.9, if you recall. Point nine into a n into f u by again the factor of safety that we have gamma m l. So this will be point nine into a n, which is we have computed two seven eight four into f u, which is four ten divided by one point two five. Now, if we simplify this, we'll get a value of eight twenty one. 0.8 kilometers. Okay, so since it is the minimum one, so we are going to take this as the design strength of the plate. Okay, lower of these two. So we are going to take this as the design strength of the plate. Now, when you say strength of the joint, efficiency of the uh, joint here. We have to take minimum of these two quantities and then the minimum of the bolt strength. Bolts. We have eight bolts there. Okay. So let me write here itself. So, what is the bolt value that we have got? The bolt value that we got is 45.27. So, we have total of how many bolts that we have? We have uh, eight bolts, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. So the total strength of the bolts will be this quantity into eight. Correct. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now let's simply calculate what is what is a typical value. Okay, uh, forget uh, 27, 45 into 8, 19 to 4. So it will be around 360. Yes, sir. Right. Now look at this. This is the total strength of the bolts. But um, yeah, 360. To be precise, it will come to 322. And this is the strength of the plate. Okay, because we have to take the minimum. So obviously. The total strength of the collection will be what is the minimum of all these quantities? The minimum of 362, 821.8, and 872. Uh, so, so that means before the plate fails, there is likely that the bolts will fail. So we have to take the strength of the bolts as our strength of the connection. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. So the strength of the connection. Strength of the joint is 
362 kilonewtons. Now, we are not given what is the design load acting on the connection. Okay. So, in such cases, what we have to uh, uh, know, uh, do is we have to find out what is the maximum load it can take. Okay. Each plate can take. So, what is the maximum uh, each plate can take? This fellow. Right? Yes, sir. Yeah, this is the maximum load it can take. So now the efficiency will be the ratio of these two. So if I say typically efficiency is always much you know, more written with this eta 362 by 872. So if you express it in percentage, it will come to 41. Okay. Look at this. A joint has reduced the strength of the plate by 60 percent. So obviously, so when you have such kind of scenarios, you should always minimize the joints. Can someone tell me how uh, Tata has achieved its uh, nano car? They minimize these joints. They minimize the uh, rivets that are being used, the welding that's being used to the, the least possible you know, things. No, not just Tata. Any, any, any design that you think, you should be able to minimize them. Okay. Otherwise, see, you have a reduction of 60% of the strength of the, you know, uh, uh, plate compared to the joint. All right. So, so when we redu reduce it to the minimum, is it not like very unsafe, sir? Can we be said like that? It is actually not a desirable thing. Okay. So, Supposing, let's say you are, uh, you you want, let's say this is a part of a truss member, okay? So yes, instead sir. of providing a joint in between, you get a uniform, a longer section. You see? Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to say. But you can't avoid a joint at that, you know, uh, pin, uh, no pin locations. Obviously, all the members are meeting. Yeah, sir. Yeah. So, but there are other means also, okay, you can actually locally strengthen it and then uh, get a higher uh, efficiency. Those things will, uh, you know, you'll, as the, you know, as you gain experience in design, you'll always, you know, invent those uh, tricks. In fact, you actually do the other way. You see that the joint has more strength, uh, more strength compared to the, because the material that goes into a joint is minimal compared to the length of the member. You see, so you can actually afford to put, uh, put extra thickness there or you can locally strengthen it. So if you see some of these, uh, you know, uh, members, they will have additional width here. You see, in a mechanical structure, it will be like this. There is additional material here. Okay, so the strength of this uh, no, uh, uh, mem member at the joint will be more compared to this. So that's why they put on additional material. Because this fellow will be long enough. So we don't want to increase the material here, but we can locally increase it and then make our joints more efficient compared to the uh, total members. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Let's take up another problem because this, uh, this class will be doing a lot of problems. Now, we'll, we'll take up a, a similar problem. Okay, where are we? Yeah. Uh, are we doing the same problem or different one? I actually got, we started with only one problem yesterday. Was it a lab joint or a butt joint? Lab joint. Lab joint. Oh, lab okay. oh, this one. This was the one that I'm supposed to pick. Okay, I took the same, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Let's stick up one problem in butt joint. Okay. No, let's go back. Yeah, this one.
okay see in in a in a physical class i used to see that at least uh, you know all of you are calculating things and then uh, or you are with, with me but i hope you are doing it even though we are not uh, you know uh, seeing each other uh, you know uh, because that's very essential uh, engineering you can't learn by uh, just by looking at things you had to soil your hands all right so we have a, a butt joint with double cover each uh, the connected plates are of 16 mm and it has two cover plates each of 10 mm so total will be 20 which is more than 16 so you can go for it they are being joined using 20 mm bolts of 5.6 uh, 5.6 grade okay now we are asked to find out what is the strength and efficiency of the connection that we have right now so we have 20 mm uh, bolts so obviously let's write down some data that we have from here d is equal to 20 mm of course the bolt holes will be 22 20 plus 2 and then we can compute the areas as and when required let's see now what is the ultimate tensile strength of the bolt Can 500. someone get 500 because it is 5.6 so 5 200 500 and then what is the yield strength of the bolt 500 into 0. 0.2 6. 6 right yeah it's so yeah. it's 300 and newton per mm square okay so this unit is also newton per mm square all right now we have two plates thickness of the plate is 16 and then thickness of the core plates are 10 now it's given that um is there any information regarding the plates okay let me write down the plates are of e 250a okay great so that means fu for this is 410 and fy is 250 okay now this is the information given for the plates now let's find out some uh, you no know, parameters from the diagram that's given we'll find out what is the pitch okay what is the gauge and what is the end cover this end distance and uh, edge distance okay so now we assume that this uh, threads that we have you know the black portion that we are seeing they're all threads so that means the shear planes that we have will be passing through the threads, both of them, right? So since there is a butt joint, so we have two shear planes and both of them are passing through the threads, right? So where are the shear planes? Here. So we have two shear planes. And then what is the pitch from here? So this is the, the center of the joint. And these are two, uh, you know, the rows of bolts are being given which is this one right 80 80 mm 80 mm okay now they are not marked this line that this is 40 okay so this for which is 80 and what is this 40 this will be the end distance yes okay and gauge is this distance isn't it so gauge is g 70. edge distance is e not okay 35 mm. okay so we got the four parameters from the diagram that's given to us let's move on so when when you want to find out the uh, strength of the joint so again the the cycle is same what we have to do we have to find out what is the design strength of the bolt or bolt value multiply with the number of bolts on either side of the you know, center of the connection you will get the total load that bolts those bolts can take correct and then and then we find out what is the design strength of the plate so for that we actually have three parameters okay but but we now in this case we are talking about only two one is the tearing strength of the plate and then the second one is 
the gross yielding uh, strength of the plate okay so these two we will get so strength of the bolts and then the other two parameters of the plate if we take all three of them and then consider what is the minimum of them that will be our strength of the joint strength of the connection okay let's do it okay we did it before and we are simply going to re uh, you know, redo it so, so once again you go to previous slide sir come in yes yes yeah I have actually seen um, the other institutes, okay, okay, may, maybe more established institutes. Um, they have the, you know, uh, the students' videos also online, like, no, they have a complete uh, setup. And uh, even they could, all the faculty could see all the students. That will be more, you know, interesting. Um, I can at least feel that I'm teaching to, to real people. I can see. Let's see. I hope uh, FX will uh, go to that level soon. Okay. So we have a total of uh, six members, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. Oh. All right. So can we move on? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I have gone to other window. Uh, have you noted down? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Right. Now, let's repeat the exercise that we have been doing. So, we had to find out what is the uh, shear strength, bearing strength, and the uh, no, a tensile strength of the bolt. But we are not having any tensile, direct tensile force on this. So, we'll take only the shearing and bearing strength. Shear strength. So again, let's write down the formula for shear strength. V D S B is equal to one by gamma of bolt into F U B tensile strength, the ultimate tensile strength of the bolt by root three, which is the strength of the shear, into N N A N plus N S A S. Right? That's the formula. So let's plug in. So we know some values. Now this is 1.25. FUB is it's 5.6 grade, so 500 by square root 3 into both the shear planes are assumed to be passing through the threads. So we'll have NS being zero. So we'll have only NN. NN is nothing but 0.7 uh, 7, 8 times the sorry. Uh, So we'll have two shear planes because this will be this bolt will be in double shear. Yes, right. uh, so it is 0 0.78 times the shank diameter, which is 5 by 4 into we have 20 mm bolts, 20 square. Right. Now, if you simplify this one, it will come to 129 kilometers. Right. Please check the value because they have to make a different uh, assumption here. Okay. Anyway, the procedure wise will not uh, think. 113.18. Oh, yeah, yeah. How much? 113.18. 131.18. 13, sir. 113. 113.18. 113.18. One one three. Okay. Now, let's compute what is the strength in bearing. That is V D C B. So we are going to write the formula for that one. We'll have one by gamma M B. Two point five. KB DT into FU. So FU is because it is a force that will be exerted by the plate on the uh, 
volt. So one point two five. Okay, we have to find out what is KB, right? So I leave that as an ex exercise because we have been doing it. So I'll give the answer. KB is 0.61 because we'll have to take those four cases and then find out what's the minimum. Uh, e by three uh, three D naught, P by three D naught, F U by F U, and then one. So we'll take the minimum of the and then we'll get this 0.61. So 2.5 into 0.61 into d which is 20 into 16 into 4 times this is the plate ultimate tenth instant okay not the bolt so let's uh, make a note of that so if we calculate this this will come to 160 kilonewtons now so and hence the bolt value will be the minimum of these two quantities, which is 113. Sir. Yes. Sir, we use uh, ultimate strength of plate no, in this case. Correct. Correct. We're assuming that uh, the bolt can resist the ultimate load from the plate. Sir. That right. is, uh, the bolt will be stronger than plate uh, in bearing. Yes. Yes. Sir. No, what, what you see, the bolt can actually uh, uh, Take a, no, it, it, it has a better uh, ultimate tensile value. But the thing is, so much of tensile stress is not coming onto it. The plate is not offering so much of uh, you know, tensile strength, uh, stress there. So we have to limit to that one. That's why we, had, uh, we have to take the ultimate tensile strength of the plate. Because it is a force exerted by the plate on the bolt. Correct. So we'll have to take that lower value, even though it is lower. Okay. So typically, yes. the connections will be higher. Okay, because we don't want the connections to fail before the member fails. So we don't want the bolt to fail before the you know plate fails. So that's why we take a, a little stronger bolts. Okay. And uh, no, that's a scenario in civil engineering. But if you if you talk about the scenario in other uh, systems, we want, we don't want the members to be safe anyhow. Uh, the the connection should fail okay without causing them so in that case we'll take a, a weaker ones okay even if the integrity is not there so the weaker one should uh, fail off and then so that the main electronic board should be intact let's say you are into uh, structural design of uh, electronic uh, you know, boards okay this is this is one of the hot uh, areas of work if somebody is interested so there the uh, the uh, you know uh, criteria will be different so such kind of things will keep changing. But, but in civil engineering, the connections which shall be always stronger compared to the members. Okay, they should not fail before the members. Yes. Yeah. All right. Now we have seen what is the bolt. Now obviously the bolt value will be four times that one. So four times uh, what is it? One one three, isn't it? Because uh, we have uh, four of them. Now. Let's go to the plate. So again, for plate, we have to find out what is the tearing strength. Tearing strength, which we designated as TG, TDG, which is A, sorry, TDN, that's the designation we use, 0.9 into a n f u by gamma m l okay now let's find out what is the effective uh, cross sectional area along the uh, no uh, see in this case we can actually identify many uh, you know possible sections through which the tearing can happen and then uh, for a simple case like this it's obviously okay we can identify with the one which is the minimum but when you have a complicated scenario we should be able to identify all the possible cases and then find out what is the effective area of all of them and then take the minimum one okay but since this is a, a this is not a scattered arrangement of the balls we have a reg very regular arrangement you take any one one or two two they'll get we'll get the same effective area because the number of bolt holes in the you know along the cross section is, is same 
and uh, breadth is same everything is same for both 1 1 and 2 2 this is 1 1 and this is 2 2 now if you look at the uh, uh, section 1 1 let's say a n will be b minus n d naught into a t which is b is 280 minus there are four bolt holes each of diameter 12 and the plates are of thickness 16 so we have to get 3072 mm square this will be the effective area so now if you plug in these parameters in the tdn expression we can compute this as 0 0.9 into 3072 into fu of the plate which is 410 actually divided by 1.25 now i'm going to write here this is going to be 906 kilometer right this is the tearing strength now when you say yield strength which is ag into fy by gamma m naught which is 280 into 16 that's the gross cross section into 250 divided by 1.1 1 .1 or 1.5 1.15 1 1.5 this will come to okay please verify this number 1018 kN okay now the minimum strength of the plate is from tearing strength okay obviously now in this case so what is the strength of the uh, total strength of the bolts that we have bolt value is 129 so we have bolt value is 113 isn't it let's look at that 113 so we have eight bolts here so Total strength of bolts. Nine one five. Okay. Nine zero five. Nine zero five. Nine zero five. Okay. So obviously we'll have to pick the minimum one. So nine zero five is the the minimum value of the uh, among all these things. Nine zero five, nine zero six, and then one zero one eight. So obviously the strength of connection will be this. Sir. Uh -huh. It's not 1.15, sir. 1.1. This one, the factor, is it? Yeah, yield factor safety. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. This is the factor of safety in yielding. Yeah. Now the strength of connection will be 905. Okay, now this has to be compared against the total strength. What is the maximum strength of the plate, which is 1018. So when you want to find out what is efficiency, efficiency will be 905 divided by 1018. Okay, now this is pretty good, almost 89% if you compute. Okay, see it, it all depends on the way you arrange the, uh, the bolts. Okay, so if you spread the bolts along the uh, length of the member, you will have a better efficiency. If you spread them perpendicular to that, the efficiency will come down because of these factors. You see? So that's what, yeah. Player strength is 906. Nine uh, this one, 906? Yes, sir. Okay. Minimum we should consider now. Yeah, but the bolt sensor uh, bolts are having a 905 now. Yes, sir. So we have to take minimum of 905, the strength of the bolts. 906. Yeah. Player strength, sir. Player strength is 906. Okay. So plate strength is 906. I agree. Okay. But the to total strength of the bolts is 905, which is uh, 8 into that 113. Yeah, 905 by 906. Mm, no. It is, it is actually 1018 because, see, this is the total uh, maximum load the plate can take. 
okay when we have no connection or no connection design this is the maximum load it can take isn't it sir it will fail in rupture sir no 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 we are uh, we are not talking about the connection now see when you say the the efficiency of the joint what is the uh, maximum load the member would have, would have taken without a joint okay okay so that will be our parameter uh, yes. against which we are comparing okay now by introducing a joint the total strength would have reduced to 905 okay now 905 and then 109 so that will be the ratio that we of uh, no which is the efficiency got it yes sir yeah all right now let's take up some more problems because uh, now for me the problems are the ones which are more interesting than theory because if you look at uh, no i don't know how many of you have a, a habit of writing short notes and then charts but, you know, charts that you can actually stick on your you know, study area i used to do that for every subject i used to have my own charts okay it will be at the max one page per uh, you know, one uh, one page per chapter so formulae terminology and very important parameters that we identify all those things will fill, fill there and at typically towards the end that is all you have to remember you will not be remembering uh, each and every sentence in the textbook only those things will be you will be able to remember so that is like you know a skeleton of the entire thing so if you take out those skeletons and everything else is application of those formulae and then those concepts and then solving them okay so we should be able to solve as many problems as possible so that we can have a good uh, grip on the subject right mm. okay i'm going to take some problems from ace academy book uh, i don't know whether you have uh, the access to these books do you have yes sir okay uh, otherwise maybe i can uh, you know, share some with you no sir you can share sir yeah sure, sure. um let's let's go to this level two questions okay yeah now these are very tricky they are not very uh, you know uh, difficult to solve but very tricky let's look at the scenario two plates of 12 mm and 24 mm thick are joined by a double core uh, but joint with 12 mm thick packing plate what will be the effect of packing on the design shear strength of the bolt do you recall what that we are doing uh, in order to identify what is the uh, uh, no effect of packing is we actually had calculated what is the uh, shear strength of the bolt and to that shear strength we have multiplied three correction factors one is for the length of the grip one is for the length of the joint other one is for the packing isn't it now try to recollect the formula for what is that uh, you know beta pkg one minus 0.0125 correct no. yes sir yeah so what is ppkg thickness thickness of the packing plate packing yeah now what is the thickness of packing plate here well enough isn't it so 1 yes, minus sir. 0 0.0125 into 12 so can someone tell me what is this value Point eight five okay so 0 0.15 and then now what is it has done 
what will be the effect of this now okay uh, unfortunately this is there okay it is decreased by 15 percent right it has decreased by strength has decreased by 15 percent because of the packing correct yes sir Let's take another problem. A mild seal flag subject to a design center a tensile force of 600 kilonewtons is connected to a gusset plate. What's a gusset plate? Something like this. Let's say you have a, a beam or a column. Okay. So you want to connect other member to this. So in order to facilitate that one, so we'll provide a plate, a, a plate like this, and then through to this plate. We provide we can provide the connection okay so this fellow will be connected here so these are gusset plates correct so we can have different shape depending on the you know necessity okay now what we are trying to say is that we are connecting using some bolts and then the strength of the bolt per pitch length okay is given okay what is my what do you mean by per pitch length let's say this member is connected using okay okay bolts like this okay. per pitch length means this fill this one now the strength of each bolt, uh, bolt is given 40 kilonewtons, 60 kilonewtons, and 50 kilonewtons. Then, what are the number of uh, bolts required in this case? Okay, the answer is given. Now, at least you have to justify it. Can someone uh, give, try to give an explanation? Minimum strength you should consider. Then yes. 600 by uh, minimum. 40. Uh, 600 right. by 40. Yeah. So bolt value is actually minimum of the three strengths. So we have to take the minimum and then uh, divide the total load by the bolt value. We'll get 50. Okay. Sir, uh -huh. can I explain the pitch length, sir? Okay. Per, uh, per pitch length. Okay. See, I this is actually an incomplete explanation. I uh, know incomplete use of pitch length here. Okay, so what what we try to do is when you say let's say we have you know three rows of them, uh, three. Okay. Now this entire thing we group into one. Okay, so this we can per pitch. Okay, so we have three bolts per pitch. Okay, okay. so in this case they are not uh, no uh, completely you know, correctly used at uh, no terminology. Otherwise, so when you say per pitch, for one row like this we have three bolts. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. No, as a student, that was also confusing for me. We used to say this is per pitch, but this is a distance uh, we call it as gauge. Okay. So I used to have that kind of a you know uh, uh, conflicting uh, you know, understanding, but over a time it is very clear. When you say per pitch, you are talking about one row. Okay. Because even though we can fancily you know uh, arrange the bolts in a scattered fashion. But uh, most of the times, people will go for a regular pack, uh, no, regular arrangement of the bolts. So per pitch means this, you know, this set of 
uh, bolts that we have in one row. Right. Let's take up uh, other one. Okay, maybe something that involves some calculation. Fifth one, uh, or uh, a single. Okay, let me copy. A single bolted double cover butt joint used to connect a plate of 6 mm, 16 mm thick, for face of 12 mm uh, thick, using M16 bolts of grade 4.6. And uh, all the parameters are given. Find the design bolt value or design strength of the bolt. Okay. Can you try to get this number quickly? So we have 16 mm plates okay, that are being connected with 12 mm. Okay, now we have a, a bolt. This is M16 4.6. Okay, obviously, FU is going to be. 400 fy is 400 to 0.6 240 mb is 1.25 okay this fellow kv has been given conveniently because it has all those you know uh, parameters that we have to do so they have given it straight away and then what is that which it's, it's being given shank of the bolt intercept the shear plane so that means the threading is somewhere here only up to this let's say so the shear plane is here uh, the shear plane is here so ns will be two and n will be zero so you have to find out what is the shear strength of the bolt in shear uh, sorry shear strength of the bolt and then the bearing strength of the bolt and then get the minimum you should be able to get 24 points I hope you are doing. Are you giving it a try? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, please. Share strand and bearing. So that last sentence means uh, that shank of the bolt intercept the shear plane means. Uh, in two, uh, yeah, that's what in the it fails in shanks, right? No, no, no. What what do you mean that? See, this is the location of the shear planes for us, isn't it? Yes, yeah, sir. So shank is intercepting that. That means the no the the hidden message is that the threadings are not up going up to this. So the threading is not there in the full length. No, full not length. in the full length. Only the entire shank is there. So n n is equal to zero and shank. Is equal yes. to two. Ns like will be equal to two. Yes. Correct. Ns yeah. Ns yeah. Ns equal to two. Na. Seventy-four point two. Seventy-four point two. You got it? Yeah. Which one is that one? Uh, shear strength yeah. or bearing strength? Shear. Shear. What is the value that you got for the bearing strength? 104.96. So obviously, um, if, if you look at in, in general the strength of the material, tensile strength is uh, somewhere in between, isn't it? Bearing strength will be more, tensile strength will be in between, and shear strength will be less. So especially when you are talking about beams, we should always look at the shear strength because it looks very you know uh, un unimportant, but that's the most dangerous fellow. We always have to check for the shear strength. All right, so we'll we'll have a break and then we'll meet again at nine o'clock. Okay. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir.